So our, the last regional event, it's finished for the second season and it was unbelievable. So I was up at the Northern Regional uh, and the passion, the energy, the people, everything was just so good. Uh, I can't even put into words how, you know, how buzzing it was and <laughs> how buzzing I still am a day later after, even after it's finished. So. A big thank you to everyone and anyone that's made the effort to get down to one wherever it's been in the country. And a really big thank you to all our regional managers who they don't get paid to do it, they do it off their own backs, they kind of see the bigger picture of this that you know we're looking to create regional hubs that help to raise the level of, of CrossFit in, in their regions and hopefully, you know, as a whole. Uh, the level in, in the UK as well so just like to say that first right today's podcast we have Fraser Clark who has recently joined the GSD Compete coaching team uh, he is co-owner of Functional Fit St Andrews uh, you'll have seen him on the scene for you know the past five six years uh, around the UK competing still competes now we recently competed with Jem Yor, who's also on this podcast at Battle for Middle Ground uh, and Jen she's turned a lot of heads this past year she's had a bit of a steep rise in how far she's come in, in such a short space of time which has been amazing to be a part of and just see happening uh, so I really enjoyed this conversation today talking about where Fraser and Jen have come from from when they were younger what they did sporting wise and to where they are now hopefully there's something in there that you can all relate to uh, that will kind of help you on your journey and hopefully there's some little things as well that will maybe make you click or you know help you improve so yeah I hope you enjoy today's podcast Let's do it. <laughs> I could moderately understand Fraser, but I couldn't understand a word that Jen was saying. <laughs> it's probably true to be fair. That would be correct for most people. Yeah. I can't believe it. So when you, when you speak, when you speak into it, roughly a fist away is how far you want your mouth. I mean, that, that looks really dodgy. <laughs> so pretend you're Eminem. It's going to hide. How do I put it down? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. I feel this is very official. It's official? Yeah, I've got a big big mic in his face. <laughs> I think it, it always feels more serious than what it is, I think. It definitely does. People are like, oh, getting super nervous. So it's like, <laughs> We're just having a conversation, guys. Do you edit it at all, or do you just put it on raw? <laughs> put it on raw. Oh. Great. Are you recording right <laughs> now? <laughs> I am. Great. <laughs> um, the whole Mattel that I, used to be. <laughs> I wish I had got that bit in as well, to be fair. I missed that. Um, right. Today, we have two Scottish people in the room. Yay. How would you say hello in Scottish if you were to greet Jen? All right. All right. All right. Um, so we've got Fraser Clark cool. from... Functional Fit St Andrews. Yep. Uh, we recently announced that you are also now a JST Compete coach. Sure am. Have you got any of the little side hustles as well, or anything, any of the job roles, titles? Mm, no, just um, coach uh, for Gym at Home and you guys now, officially. Cool. Athlete still as well. Athlete still as well. Yeah. And then we've got Jennifer Muir that prefers Jen. <laughs> <laughs> um, you are from Kirkin Tilly. Yes. Did I get that right? Kirkin Tillock. Not so, far off. Not far off. Um, we recently just changed our names from now we're Blueprint Performance. Okay. So you coach PT out there? Yeah. Do you do anything else other than that? No. So I coach out of Blueprint and mm -hmm. then kind of like a, a gym just around the corner, also PT out of there. Okay. Cool. Um, so you guys have been down the past couple of days doing a bit of training. We had like a, a mini training camp, which was pretty fun. Um, how, how have we found it? 
kind of coming down to Wigan, getting stuck in. Um, yeah, it's been uh, good. Mm-hmm. Um, probably, I think training in this environment um, is a lot more intense than what it would maybe be at home. But it's always good to push yourself when it's required. Yeah. Um, also, just having um, a lot of watchful eyes on while we're doing stuff is super helpful. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I'm at home, I feel it's quite easy to just go through the motions um, a lot. So it's just nice to ramp it up a little bit for a few days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been good. Jen? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Like back home, I'm quite lucky. I've got like another five people in the gym who are on GST as well. Right, okay. But they're all got like nine to five jobs, so I don't always <laughs> get to gym with them. Um, so I usually get to like jump in and out with people, but it's been really good having like a group of people to gym with. Good. Consistently. We had um, a conversation along these lines when we were in the gym downstairs about. Um, either following, you know, an individual program on your own, or being in a group set, a group setting in an environment. Um, which, you know, which do you guys prefer? Or do you feel like there's need to be a bit of both? Or yeah, what are your vibes with with that? I feel that a good environment will always trump like the world's greatest program. <laughs> But like I, I do think there, there does have to be some sort of structure. But generally, if you're in a good environment, the majority of the time, yeah. you're, you're going to do far better than if you're in a not so good environment. Or if you're on, particularly if you're on your own all, all the time, I feel like you need, you need that environment at, at the right time. Mm-hmm. What was your sport before CrossFit? Uh, I played rugby before, uh, and then before that, I was a, I was a swimmer. Okay. Um, but the majority of my like childhood teen age was playing rugby. Right. Okay. So how did obviously you've got a bit of experience before, um, like before CrossFit and obviously with CrossFit now of being in probably those different environments. Um, was sailing? Uh, was sailing? Was swimming kind of really specific to you? Was it you know a lot just kind of on your own? Or? Yeah, like swimming you spend 90% of your session with your head in the water yeah. like looking at black line going along the <laughs> pool um, so like you're in there in your, in your own thoughts and I think swimming's one of those ones where like you're solely responsible for what you get out of it where yeah. rugby like rugby is so different I think I was really lucky my rugby club that I played with the whole way through it's like a, a local club of which right. We, produ- we have produced and still produce a lot of professional and international rugby players so the environment was always good because I think you always knew that there was an opportunity mm-hmm. um, to go on and do good things and that was that was um, the training environment and the club ethos was always at the forefront yeah. of that which I think always set you up for success yeah We'll, we'll dig deeper into this in a sec. What, what about you, Jen? What Sport-wise, what was it before CrossFit? Yeah, so I grew up in swimming as well. Um, so I started swimming at the age of nine. Right. But my older brother's a swimmer, so it was very much more his sport than mm-hmm. mine. Um, like, I'd always look at him and be like, do you ever just not want to go back <laughs> in the pool? <laughs> but, like, yeah, I was never really as passionate about it as he was, but I still, like, I did really still enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And then... When I got to about 14, 15, um, I transitioned to triathlon, yeah. which was a bit more for me. I just like preferred having other sports to train for than just the one. Um, and then when I was just kind of finishing school, I was finding it really difficult to still train for triathlon, just mm. with the amount of hours you had to dedicate to it. So yeah. um, I just started kind of going to the gym, and somebody like in the gym was a powerlifter, and I kind of got into that for a bit. So right, I did okay. powerlifting for a year and a half. Right. Um, before I transitioned to CrossFit. Um, and from your experiences over over the years now, what what are kind of the the differences between the sports? Like, what really stands out to you? Like, what do you feel like swimming was like? What do you feel like the triathlon scene was like? What about powerlifting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, swimming and triathlon are like completely different from powerlifting. So, like, swimming and triathlon, loads of volume. Okay. So you like two, three sessions a day. Mm-hmm. 
you're just powerlifting, you'd be like four sessions a week. Mm-hmm. So it's like <laughs> quite big, <laughs> um, which has kind of helped me with CrossFit, like understand the, like the two as well, like how much rest you really need from like strength training and stuff. Um, you can't go at it like you would for swim back in the pool, of course. back on the bike for triathlon. Mm-hmm. How was the difference going from obviously doing loads of volume to then going into power lifting and it's only four sessions a week? Because mm-hmm. I can imagine a lot of people would be like, uh, I feel like I should be doing way more than this. Um, you know, yeah. yeah, so um, like I did struggle with that. So I'd do my mm-hmm. four powerlifting sessions, but then I would also still go swim and run once mm-hmm. a week just to try and keep it up. Yeah. Um, and then we had like we mini like conditioning classes on at the gym mm-hmm. and they were like half an hour twice a week and I'd still do them. So as much as like I did enjoy powerlifting, it wasn't like quite all in for me. Yeah. Um because I wasn't like big on taking the, the three <laughs> days off recovery um for it. So yeah, I find it difficult. What what about the environment between the different sports? Like, was there a clear difference between the sort of crowd that was in swimming to powerlifting and and now to now to CrossFit? Um, um well, again, like all of the sports I've done have all been individual, mm-hmm. so I've kind of been used to training on my own, okay. which I guess has kind of helped as well. Yeah. Um, it's so like swimming by yourself, powerlifting by yourself. Um, and then CrossFit was good. Like if I don't have anyone there, I'm quite, I'm like fine training by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm used to. It. Yeah. Um, whereas I think if you came from a team sport, then maybe going to train by yourself, you might find that mm-hmm. way more difficult. Did you, Fraser? Um, well, you had swimming as well, didn't you? Yeah, so moving. So I always found that the the moving from swimming to rugby was was easier for me because I felt like I always swam better and I really. Okay. So like while I did an while I did individual like events, like I re- like I always really enjoyed like the team aspect. So yeah. so like making a transition from swimming to rugby was probably pretty was probably pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and like once once I was immersed in like a social culture, like in a rugby team, mm. like training for swimming became hard because like you'd send a pill and I'd like like right is there someone here like I want to talk to you. Or like, or you'd be like, "Swan is like, oh, this is a bit boring. There's no one to, yeah. talk, to talk to." So, um, that transition for me was probably fairly straightforward. Yeah. Because um, like, like I think I think the decision to talk to him was pretty much like one day, one day I didn't want to do it, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Right, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, not doing, doing this anymore." That also came with like a performance thing too. Um, so it was like. I got to kind of a level of both where I was like, if I want to do one of these well, I kind of need to drop one or the other. Yeah. So the decision was made easier. I was like, this like being in a social environment. Mm-hmm. And I think anyone that knows me knows like I'm a bit of a social butterfly. So mm-hmm. um, having other like having other people around, it was a, like it was a no brainer. Yeah. What? Just so we know, what level did you you get to in rugby? Uh, so I played. Um, Scotland under 18, Scotland under 19, and then um, I missed Scotland under 20s. Um, okay. I, pro- I was injured, but when I reflect on it, many years gone by now, I probably I probably wasn't good enough to have, mm-hmm. have made it. Like I feel like as I got older, people started to excel, yeah. like probably more than I did. I think it's funny. I think it's funny now looking back on it because I think if I had the same work ethic back then as what I had now. Mm. My life may have taken a bit of a different trajectory, yeah. but le- lessons learned, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy in hindsight. A hundred percent. And Jem, what about you as well? Just so we we know what kind of wavelength we we got to here. Um, so swimming, I was always like national level. Okay. Um, triathlon, I uh, competed with the Scotland team. Okay. And then powerlifting, I uh, was um third in the like international powerlifting federation for like British. So I was like third in Britain for powerlifting mm-hmm. for my weight class. So we're all all three of us were pretty much national level for for the sports that we that we did. Um, and kind of tailing off uh, what you said before about like a team environment and an individualist sport as well. When I've reflected on sailing a little bit more and probably what I enjoyed more so is when I was in the team environment. So, for example, we have regional squads in sailing, national squads in sailing. 
like when I was in that environment, I performed probably at my best because I was enjoying it. I was in this group setting where everyone was like, right, yeah, we're going to do the same thing. When it got to when I was 19, 20, and it was either you made the Olympic development squad or you didn't, that was the point at which I was like, well, I just kind of plateaued and, you know, the the performance um, kind of just wasn't, wasn't there where it used to be. Um, when I... <clears throat> Like, I always find it, like, interesting when you moved from, like, level to level, mm. like, in particularly in rugby. So, in particular when you're going through, like, an age grade, like, format, so you're playing at your club and you're obviously at that point, you're playing with your mates and stuff and yeah. you all know each other really well um, and you love it and then you move to, like, regional level. So, I, uh, my region was Caledonia, mm-hmm. uh, of which you bring in boys from other clubs and immediately when you're going through that phase to start off with it's like everyone's quite sheepish mm-hmm. and it's like quite intense yeah. but then when you're in that squad like I always found your sign of like your success or probably good coaching was to be able to bring those like athletes together mm-hmm. to make it work and then you created like the same environment as what you had in your club level and I remember like the first time I went into like we went to a Christmas camp for Scotland and the Routines and I'd had friends that had been at it the year before because they were a year older. And, like, I remember walking in being so nervous because the way they described it was, like, the worst experience ever. <laughs> was that it was dog-eat-dog dog and it was you're competing with all these people for this, like, one position. Mm. And, it, and it was. It was, it was horrible. It? But then once you got through that initial, like, selection phase, again, your coaches, like, really, at that point, the rugby's kind of taken care of because you've clearly got, like, 30 guys who are like are pretty good at rugby but creating the environment for them to come together like and then go and like express in their performance yeah. like like became absolutely the forefront of like what they did yes um, so yeah yeah uh, I think uh, earlier this year especially we that was the first time for ourselves within you know within CrossFit to bring a group of people together who probably you know, had not really spent much time around each other. They were maybe aware of each other. Um, but a similar sort of vibe, like you're trying to bring a squad together to, you know, uh, help push each other and uh, create a good environment. And it's actually really, really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we probably made every single mistake in the book, you know, to um, bring all these people together in a really intense environment when they'd never been in anything like that before. I think, yeah, it's um, there's a lot more to it than just oh, let's just bring these people down and like it's all good. There's a bit more. There's a bit more to it than that. Yeah, I think there's a um, who it was like the in rugby every four years I always have the British and Irish like lines that come together yeah and I remember listening to I feel like it must have been like maybe 2009 mm. and a really rogue choice like at that point was an Irish guy like Alan Quinlan who he was probably at the latter end of his career but right. like he was still still clearly a very good rugby player mm-hmm. but like he came into the group as like a he's going to be a good guy for the squad yeah so like it wasn't just a, like bringing a group of people together not always necessarily but having like in rugby terms fif- the 15 best players mm-hmm. like it's about maybe having 13 of the best players and two guys who can bridge a gap to yeah. keep that squad together yeah. um, which I, like from playing like a team sport that is like super super important is like mm-hmm. you'll have guys that float in and around the squad that maybe aren't the best rugby players in the world but like they're very very good for the environment keeping that together t- to allow your best players to go on and, and excel and do amazing things of course were you aware of I don't know these sort of factors as, as well Jen like you go into a squad and you knew it was a good vibe and you could just focus on what you were doing or was the times where you know there were ups and downs yeah so like kind of the only experience I had with that was like the Scottish triathlon squad mm-hmm. and um, I like I like triathlon, but for that for me made me hate triathlon. Right, okay. Um, it was very, like, just really competitive yeah. in the sense that, like, because you're in a squad, but, like, you're all competing individually. And it almost felt like 
you know, if you were injured or there's any issues, it was like, right, you're off, who's in next? Right, okay. So it was like, you felt like you always had to be at the top of your game yeah. to stay within the squad. Yeah. Um, which I hated, like it made me hate the sport. That's <laughs> 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 <Is> it for me. <laughs> when you were, how many brothers and sisters have you got? Uh, I've got an older brother and yeah. then a younger sister and a younger brother. Are you a sporty family as a whole? Yes, like my old, older brother's a swimmer, mm-hmm. um, and then like my my little brother's like still trying to find like what sport he okay. wants to do, but um, he very much like it's important for him to find one. Yeah. So he's like just trying a bunch of sports at the moment. Um, my little sister's probably the least sporty, but she's like naturally gifted at yes. it, so she'll yeah. still keep herself like fit. Um, and then she's like the brains of the family, so she's studying medicine. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about your mum and dad as well? Did they do sport? No, no. not sport. I'm just like it. Right, okay. <laughs> so did, did they just kind of take you, you and your brother down to swimming and we're just like, oh, this would be good to... Yeah, so um, we, live, we live like right like right next to the canal when I was seven I fell in so <laughs> they, um, they got straight in swimming <laughs> is that swim. yeah. is it? <laughs> straight to swimming <laughs> so and I think that was literally the only reason why but like my brother's really gifted at it so mm-hmm. um, from like an early on he like moved right up the swimming lessons quite quick yeah. and then anything he did that I wanted to do so just following him <laughs> when they took you to swimming was it the attitude it was like you have to go or was it the case where they were like right we need you to start swimming just in case this happens again but (laughs) if you want to stay in it like you can do if not like that's also fine so my mum she's like never really been bothered about it but my dad was very much like you have to go right okay (laughs) so like um, if there was a school party on and you had training you were going training (laughs) 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 there there was no missing it (laughs) is he still like that now as well Um, no not anymore no no. Um, but I guess there's probably the discipline side from your dad what from your mum what what kind of area do you think she brought to it was she did she i don't know emphasize like you've got to make sure you enjoy it you've you, do you know what i mean what yeah she um like she kind of just let my dad deal with the sports side okay. um, she was just like quite big and like you maintain your schoolwork. right um which she's not anymore my little brother he gets away with murder <laughs> but <laughs> um yeah my dad was very much like he was on all, all the sporty side so mm-hmm. he was like right into it yeah yeah and what about you, Fraser? Um, so I've got uh, an older brother and sister. Mm. Um, they're twins. Oh, right, okay. Um, so that was a, an interesting dynamic <laughs> going on. Um, so they're like, um, like telepathy, like put them together. <laughs> like, they have like a, a relationship that I can't really describe. Yes. Um, but um, they were both gifted with brains right. where I necessarily wasn't. Um, but my sister was my sister was a was a decent swimmer like all the way through school and stuff, um, and then my brother um, he played a bit of rugby at school, yeah, um, did a bit of swimming when he was younger and stuff. But he like wasn't really into the competitive side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents, um, my dad was like a really good curler. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then my mum, not really that sporty. My mum's a teacher, so also, like, quite hot on the, yeah. like, you need to keep up your, like, s- your schoolwork yeah. um, just in case. But my parents were very much like, a, if you want to go and do this and excel in it, mm-hmm. you'll, probably, you'll probably do it. So they were quite hands-off in terms of, like, anything I wanted to do, they were happy to take me to do it. Yeah. Um, but they were very much like a, like... You tell us, like, if you don't want to do it, you tell us, and yeah, like, yeah, I had the freedom to go. Um, but I think, like, when I said earlier on, like, had I had the same work ethic now that, like, back then that I have now, I feel like if I'd had them um, a slightly more pushy parent, like, maybe I, maybe I would have. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it probably needed, like, there was time probably growing up where I probably needed, like, a bit of a kick in the arse, yeah, like, to get me going that, like, I maybe never really got mm-hmm. it's like oh you're slacking a little bit or you're you're coasting through here probably mm-hmm. I probably needed that and I, and I probably never I probably never got it right okay like, how since that point then how do you feel like you've started to become aware of that or develop that yourself do you know what I mean that kind of 
work ethic? Like, uh, is it just from being, I don't know, in the CrossFit space, or yeah, what, um, where do you feel like it's come from? Oh. Yeah, I think um, like not making, like not making that squad under twenties, like squad at time, like albeit injured, but also not being good enough. Like, like in my rugby career was probably the first bit of, like disappointment that like I'd had. It was mm-hmm. like I really wanted something, and then like. I never, like I never got it. it was the first time I'd probably tasted like a like a bit of dis- a bit of disappointment yeah. Yeah. Um, but then also through playing like my club career like we went through a, we went through a phase where like in my first two three senior years of rugby we didn't lose a game mm, right. because what like what we had was like a group like a really big group of like really good youngsters that mm-hmm. then infiltrated like the senior team yeah and then like two or three years of like repeated success promotions to higher leagues and then you naturally like hit what is your kind of like natural like this is the level you're at and then you start to lose yeah and it was like your attitude starts to change like and it's like someone you've had you've gone through this phase in your life where there's no real hurdles mm. but then naturally like as you like went through like hurdles started to appear yeah and the more I had to overcome, like those hurdles, the more I was like, "Well, like no one's gonna, no one's gonna do that for me. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna, like I'm gonna have to put that work in yeah. myself." Um, and before I ever got into coaching space, like I had a job that was like I had a job that was like that. I, I was a manager of a pub like, okay. before, like I got into the CrossFit coaching space, <laughs> yeah. and, and like that presented like hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. Like that's that's not a career I would. Like I would like to return back. Like I would really like to return back into, um, but like that I think taught me a lot in terms of graph, like grafting, mm-hmm. um, and also like if you like if you want something, you have to work for it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, um, as well, I can imagine working at a pub for you, like the social side of things. It probably did it tick that box. Did you enjoy doing that? Like what? yeah, yeah. Um, so when it was good, it was good. Yeah, like it was really good. Uh, but when it was bad, it was, like it was really, really, bad. really bad. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, I worked in I worked in quite a shitty place. Right. Um, so like, say like when it was good, because mm. like I, like there was times that it was like it was wild. Of course. Um, but yeah, like like at times like I loved it, but also at, like at times it was just yeah the worst thing. And it was, it never really it would never really constituted like being that successful or anything mm-hmm. like late nights and. Mm-hmm. Um, like I would play rugby on a Saturday afternoon, right? And I would like drive straight from the game to like to go work and, to work and stuff, and um, which ground I'd like be standing in the pub with like a big black eye, like black eye, <laughs> like several your customers like, oh, what happened to you? It's like, oh yeah, I play like I play rugby, blah blah. So, um, but yeah, like having a like, and that's obviously hands on, like dealing with people. So, um, yeah, it certainly taught you how to graft. Yeah. What about you, Jen? Have you experienced, I don't know, a point at which it was like a, a quite a big low, maybe, or a, like, for example, Fraser's situation there was kind of like you missed that next squad, and it was kind of like, right, that's a bit of a reality check there. Like, yeah. So like, um, uh, like again, I didn't really have that within swimming more yeah. so. Um, I feel like. You kind of made like national level and then the next level above that was like such a big jump that you like weren't necessarily even looking at that next level. Mm-hmm. So it was always just kind of like chipping away at your times, like trying to get like small PBs. Yeah. Um, but like just talking about like discipline, like um, I feel like having that at like from a younger age has been really good for me. Yeah. Because it's like it's almost like a habit, like there was never up for debate, like training always came first. Of course. Um, but unlike my brother, when he was like doing swimming, like you know, he was disciplined because he wanted to do it. But mm-hmm. it was like I just found like I hadn't really found my sport with swimming. Right. Okay. So like I was disciplined, but more because I had to be disciplined because yeah, yeah, he was yeah, doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, whereas now, like CrossFit, like I'm disciplined because I want to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's actually like it helps, obviously, being like passionate about something. Yeah, of course. And I think that was similar for me again with sailing, where I. <clears throat> 
probably did it more so to make like my grandpa and my parents happy and stuff. And I was I was decent at it, so I was like, oh yeah, I'll keep going. And then when there was that point where it was like I'm actually not getting any better now, the relief after I told my grandpa that I wasn't going to sail anymore, I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Whereas, so I started sailing when I was about twelve. When I was 15, 16, I'd started going to the gym with some friends. Um, and they ended up kind of flaking off, and I carried on with it. And mm. that was like my thing where I'd keep myself disciplined. I'd make sure that I go, you know, five, six days a week from 16 till, you know, what I, whatever I am now, 30, 31. So it's funny when you, when you do find that sport or whatever it is, it's kind of like, it's not even there is effort that you put in but it's not as much effort because it's like I just want to go and want to go and do it yeah um, yeah I guess you find the same as well yeah um, <laughs> so I stopped playing I stopped playing rugby like through injury okay all um, right so it wasn't kind of your choice to probably yes and no right so like I've had, had a series of injuries. Uh, the last sort of big one, um, I fractured my eye socket. Oh, shit. Um, just a, tack- a tackle gone wrong, like on play for a long time. Yeah. One, like once in a lifetime thing. And then off the back of it, like I was just never really the same. Right. Confident shot. Mm. Um, so I p- carried on playing for maybe about a season and a half yeah and I just I just wasn't the same that was it like wasn't the same guy and I feel like because of that I was probably more at risk of doing something else mm-hmm. um, so the sort of sensible head comes on yeah. at that point and that was at the was point where like I kind of just found CrossFit um, I would just like a transition in it from moving like moving job from the public into gym so like I was about to become newly self-employed and stuff mm-hmm. and at that point you're like your whole life's changing and it's like well I can't just go off on a sick and get like sick pay like it's like if I'm not working I'm not earning yeah and I've now got this like l- like lineage of injury after injury and it's like how much is that really going to affect me so really my sensible head came on right like to be like maybe this is not the best idea yeah but also at the same time I find I find CrossFit and for me like competitive CrossFit ticks all the boxes that like I needed mm-hmm. at that age because I won't look at that point I was only 25 yeah like I was a long way like short of like finishing my rugby career mm-hmm. like where I probably anticipated it was going to finish yeah like I probably anticipated that I'd probably play rugby until I was well probably 32 33 <laughs> and all of a sudden I was like well I'm, I'm semi being forced to slash I feel this is the right thing to do at the age of 25 so it's like I feel like I've got something to give elsewhere. Mm. Like, and CrossFit came at a really good, like a really good point in, yeah. in my life to like just keep me, keep me going. So did you drop everything? Did you drop work, rugby, and everything else, and just go all in on CrossFit then? <laughs> no, I, I, I did it. I did it. You're laughing because we had to talk about that earlier. Right? No, I didn't. Um, so um, to start with, it was very much work, work in the work in the gym first. Okay. Um, I discovered that leaving your job in November is probably not a good thing to do, <laughs> and especially moving into the fitness industry, um, <laughs> where you take on a bunch of clients in November and then Christmas party season hits, <laughs> and it, everyone cancel everyone cancels all their sessions. Um, so uh, that December January was like a little bit icky mm. in terms of like oh, I don't know, like I don't know that I'm cut out for this, but yeah. then um, I actually. I actually fell on my feet with that for some really unfortunate, like circum- like really unfortunate circumstances. But then that w- that enabled me to like kick on and mm-hmm. and then Jim like kicked on and from yeah. there, fine. Yeah. What about you, Jim? So I was very much like just finish my uni degree and okay. then probably go into PE teaching. Is that what you were going to yeah, do? So, so did you do your degree in... Yeah, fi- well, I finished my degree. I did my degree in sport development. Right. Um, and then the plan was also to go do the one-year postgrad in PE teaching. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I was either between that or the fire brigade. Right. But when lockdown hit, I was in my third year of uni. Right. And um, it was like after lockdown, I joined CrossFit Gym. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, whole, whole plan changed. <laughs> <laughs> that was all, all I wanted to do. Um, so, I, like, my first year of CrossFit, I was in, like, my well, final year of uni. Mm-hmm. So, finished finished uni and then very much, like, went into PT and then went and got, like, my CrossFit level one. Yeah. Had, like, already spoken to, like, um, my gym owner about, mm-hmm. like, coaching. So I knew, like, get my level one and then start coaching. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's kind of been it from there, like, coaching and PT and, and then just training. And it's, like, I'm glad I've got my degree to, like, fall back on if I ever do want to go back mm. and do, like, PT teaching. But, um, like, I was very much just picking the job because it was, like, something related to, yeah. it, like sport exercise like I didn't there's nothing really like unlike my sister who likes dying to do medicine mm. like wants to be a doctor I never really had anything that I really wanted to do yeah um, so like right now this suits me yeah of course to it yeah yeah I was similar so I did my degree in geography and then I did a master's straight after because I was like my uncle in Aberdeen earns loads of money at an oil and gas company I was like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna do that as well did the the master's and got a job and I was like this is this is an office <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to me. Um, so after a couple of years of doing that and I'd started going to GST as well I was like I quite miss, I quite miss the gym when I go offshore and when I go like when I'm in the office all the time it was it was pretty boring um, yeah. and I was like oh Steve and John have offered me an opportunity here hmm go on then let's <laughs> let's give it a whirl second yeah. time round when they asked me and just the obviously I knew I had my parents there to support me but my mum was like very much against like you definitely shouldn't do this you spent all that time you know doing going this degree uni, yeah. going to uni um, like you're crazy and then obviously six seven years down the line probably a bit longer still here that's so funny that's funny you say that because I remember when I spoke to my parents about moving like from leaving the country to going to the gym they're like, yeah. like, like what? What, what are you doing like what are you doing that for <laughs> and, like I worked my way up and I was like the general manager of this pub and they're like oh, you've got like a really good job like good like good salary I know it's hard and stuff but like but like my mind like I hate this I, like, I, like, I literally hate this um, she's like oh I just think you're making such a you're making such a mistake and I was like no mum this is literally the best thing I could do yeah, yeah. And, it was, and it wasn't until like four months later she was like Fraser that's the best thing you've ever done Aww. I was Aww. like yeah <laughs> yeah <it's." laughs> the thing is though you'd, you'd never realise and do, until you do take a bit of a risk and I know we were talking before about uh, there's some people that obviously watch CrossFit and YouTube and they're like, I'm quitting everything and doing CrossFit. Yeah. And that's, I'm just going to be an athlete. And it's like, you do need some evidence there first, though, to support you making that decision in the sense, for me, like, Steve and John had already asked me if I could coach there. I knew I was a decent athlete with what I was doing because I'd made it onto the team with CrossFit JST for a couple of years. It was like, right, I think if I do apply myself more here I can you know make this work mm. whereas obviously like we were saying before there's some people that maybe don't have that bit of evidence for them to you know make make that decision yeah like coming from a sporting background you you obviously go through a process where someone's dictate probably dictating like whether you're going to take that like, yes. next le- like n- step to the next level Whereas, like, in, in CrossFit, it's just not like that. It's like, I, like I'm going to down tools and, like, if I train hard enough, I can go to CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. And, like, for for some people, you're probably like, yeah, that's probably true. Like, if you do train hard enough. Yeah. But for a lot of people, like, unfortunately, the, the sport's happening. grown to the stage where, like, it's not like that. It's like, mm-hmm. you, you have to have some sort of background to set yourself up for success here. It's, it is not, it's not a case of, yeah, like... I, like I've, I've only ever like gone out for a run to keep myself fit and healthy and cross it looks fun yeah and it looks hard but yeah. Like, oh yeah like if I work hard enough like like I'll go it just, doesn't work, it just doesn't work like that 
anymore. Yeah, like I'm really lucky with that. Like my mum is so supportive to like if I'm like mum, I'm I'm doing this because I'm changing the course again. She's like, okay, like as long as you're having a good time, <laughs> like she's so supportive. But like she she would need for me to be like, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. Before she would ever be like, you can like you really need to not do this anymore. Of course. Um, so like I'm really lucky in that sense. Like I've got her support. But, yeah, I can't, can't imagine not having any support. <laughs> Again, I was probably, probably pretty similar in the sense that early on, like, when, when my mum and dad realised, like, yeah, I was going to do this, they were like, right, here's the support now. We mm. will, you know, you don't have to pay rent for a couple of months until, you know, you get yourself going. You do need that, you know, support network and, like, home to kind of go to because if it doesn't work work you, you do need a bit of a fallback and it kind of gives you the roots to be able to right I'm going to take this risk I'm going to go for it yeah yeah um that's interesting um fast forwarding so kind of crossfit the past couple of years uh you now own a box as well Fraser uh -huh. uh, go on um how how was that kind of come into it so when you initially started CrossFit was that the plan that you were like I'm gonna you know open my own or did it kind of grow and since then as well since you've opened your gym how has it been growing a community as well um I wouldn't say it was a plan okay um I feel like I probably stumbled across the opportunity mm -hmm. um the guys that I co own it with uh, already had a gym in Dundee. Yes, okay. Um, the plans for St Andrews, like St Andrews, was at the point of opening um, by the time I came on board. Right. Um, but one of the original um, investors had kind of been like, she had invested in the first gym, mm. but she was like, I kind of I kind of don't want to be part of this anymore. So then they were looking for someone to come in and, yeah. and help that situation out. And at that point I was quite happy like quite happy to to do so. Um, we in terms of going to the community, we were very much like the heart of that. So there uh, there was Sam, a really great Welsh guy that he doesn't actually work with us anymore myself and Kirsty who still works with right. me now uh, and like we were just literally any social opportunity um, and at that point I feel like the competitive side was I, I was keen to do so keen to do it um, but like it was very much gym first so it was like yeah. a social was like a night out and yep. it's like we're all going we're all going to night out and we're going to drag as many members along as we could and while we're on this night, we're going to tell as many people about the gym as we can. And so, like, <laughs> I think, like, there's a stereotype that goes with, like, a crossfitter, and we were absolutely those, that stereotype. It was like, you walk into a party, and the first thing you tell them is you do crossfit. Rule number one of crossfit. Yeah, you yeah, tell everyone and, you do yeah, crossfit. And we, we were, like, for those people. Um, but, like, we... Where we are geographically, it's, and it's, like, it's a student town. Yes. Um, so... We do really, really well when the students are here. Mm -hmm. Like our membership will grow by thirty percent or so cool. when the students are here. But we have like a really good group of like core members that, for the majority of them, they've pretty much been there since we, since we've opened. Right. Um, which is class, and it and it's literally like they know literally everything that's going on in our lives, and we know literally everything that's going on yeah. in their lives, which is which is cool. Um, because it was interesting. Like I think I was like I think I was. There was, there was somewhat that was probably the most nervous thing I like I had when I was joining the like you guys was that I was like how are all these guys that have like come to be a part of our community how are they going to receive me actually like doing something else mm -hmm. because all of all I've ever known is me work like working in, yeah. in that gym yeah and um, but naturally like that just like my own self doubt and actually like it could have been better like received everyone's been like super supportive of of like probably for me like a, a new challenge yeah. more than anything else um, and as well like when you you know you care about someone and you you know you, you want the best someone you want them to grow as a person as well so yeah. naturally it's kind of like 
what's an actual stepping stone for for you to learn about something else or try and add to your to your game that can you know probably stuff that you'll learn will help you know your members yeah. at the gym as well um, when I was telling them I, like I, I felt like I like I think that was the easy, the easiest thing to get across was like like I've got a really good opportunity to learn stuff and for some of it it may not be relevant to you particularly moving into like a competitive space mm -hmm. but like also I'll, there'll be a lot of stuff that will be that yeah. will naturally like trickle down from me to the guys that that work with us like then to to you guys yeah. so nah. yeah but like I, like I love it and I think like still having like still having that like on the daily is like class mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm like really fortunate to be one of those people that, that wakes up every morning and be like like I literally love my job like, yeah like I literally love it do you feel the same Jeb yeah you do yeah. Um, so I was like only coaching like twice a week okay. up until about a month ago and now um, there's like three of us like um, the gym owner Alan and then Martin and me mm -hmm. and, like the three coaches so I'm like not only in the gym all the time for training <laughs> <laughs> like I know the gym all the time for work as well and just like the in-betweens as well so you like really get to know the members That's so um, yeah it's become it's like genuinely it's like my home like, I love it. It, it, that's, it's really, it is really good. And I was in the same position that you are now. Um, I, I'd also be aware that there probably will come a point where it's a bit like I'm in the gym all the time, all day. And it can become a little bit overwhelming because it's like I just need a different space to, mm -hmm. you know, either do a little bit of work or... Um, you know, just I just need to get out of here for an hour or so, just so that when you come back and it's like, right, I can give my best again now. Um, me and Jamie speak, Jamie Boston speak quite a bit as as well about when you're coaching classes. As an, as an example, I always found that when I coached two hours back to back, that third class after that, would, the quality would start to drop because you gave your best for those two hours, and it's like to do that again for a third hour and then a fourth hour, it's like. Yeah, it was a lot. So I think um, just being aware that, that there probably will be a point where that starts happening. It's like, right, what can I do to maybe counter that, counteract that a little bit? Did you find the same or not? Yeah, um, and even like even now, like like what what you describe, like I like I sometimes do feel so yeah. like um, for me. The, the day I probably do that about a day a week where I'll coach like multiple classes in a day yeah and like when I when I hit like that 6.30pm class and I'm like like I, I now probably recognise it a little bit mm -hmm. better than probably what I did when I first started of course but it's like you give it all 4.30, 5.30 and, and then 6.30 you're like right so I have to like just take like take a couple of minutes while they're warming up like find a, find a quiet space and take a minute and then go back to it yeah. Um, and it, yeah, like it's it's hard that. Yeah, it is hard. Have you? I don't know if you're aware of it yet. Have you found that situation yet at all? No, not no. really. <laughs> you're still in that honeymoon period. <laughs> like, yeah, still, yeah, still absolutely. Like obviously, you do get like if you started at six a.m. by like half six, the half six class at night, you are mm, tired. But course. like, I'm just really aware that I'm tired. Mm -hmm. It's not because of like the coaching, because like I do absolutely love it. And yeah. then obviously, we're like. The, different people coming in each class you mm -hmm. get to see different people I yeah. feel like that get, like that helps good. pick up my energy as well yeah, good. Um, so like if I'm feeling tired by half six like I'm aware that it's because I've been on my feet all day yeah. and it's like swaying from side to side yeah. Yeah. <laughs> rocking the full time <laughs> the rocking's slowing down now Jen's getting tired <laughs> she's napping standing up <laughs> yeah if you ever see me standing still then you know I'm in a bad place <laughs> <laughs> um, why why still compete as an athlete, Fraser? Because obviously you got the gym. You've been competitive for five years. Yeah, yeah something like that. Years, yeah. yeah, still loving it. Yeah, um, I wasn't I wasn't loving it. If I'm honest, you weren't. No, so I think the guys that I work with probably testify that I went through a phase, probably like most people did, like during. COVID that yeah. was like well, I think I'm maybe done I think I'm maybe done with this okay um, 
and um, the best thing the best thing that we did was Sid um, when we took the team in Scotland Sid Sid Origins yeah okay um, and that that just ignited the fire again that like I felt like I hadn't had I felt just like so I, I actually competed at that Battle for Metaground event literally a week later we were, we were in lockdown yeah so just like and I feel like I had like a season like semi-planned at that point and then it just kind of all went like to shit like yeah. quite frankly yeah, yeah. Um, and then to essentially go like a year and a half without doing it like yeah. I'd, I'd turned 30 like my, my, I felt like my life circumstances had like changed a lot I was just like I just don't know that I really need this anymore <laughs> um, and I wasn't that hungry like for it like particularly like when we went back into lockdown so, yeah. so like the first lockdown I feel was, was good nicer weather trained really hard with some degree of mobility mm-hmm. um, and that's when we're talking about like that 5k row yeah. it's actually like I took all those sessions like so seriously and I was really hungry but then when we got back like into gym fine and then we went into lockdown in the Again. January time and it was at that point I was just like I just don't know that I just don't know that I want to do this anymore yeah um, and then the idea of of that like like just came because I was like none of the gyms in Scotland are, are re- away from CrossFit Glasgow were really like big enough to put together what was like a competitive team yes. so like they've probably got a community that they could go and participate mm-hmm. but like never like participate I feel like at the level that certainly I would want to like yeah. given like my sport back in Gen Paul is saying like participation fine but like you want to go and be competitive mm-hmm. whose idea was that did you mind it was yours yeah so I had I saw the original post from Ollie come out about it um, and we'd been at a Castle Games threes event which was the first thing that we did like coming out of lockdown mm. and it was like just like a really fun threes thing just to kind of dip the toe in and actually see how I felt about it yeah um, and uh, I spoke to Liam mm-hmm. um, with a view of I felt like I, I wanted to, like I wanted to curse Alexa but also Ali and Sai from East Cold Bride were there um, and Ali and Sai were super were super keen on it yeah um, because they at the time were just kind of again dipping their toe back into the comp mm-hmm. stuff but also they were launching base compete of course um, so it kind of tied in well with what they were doing fast forward a week later I went to school bride to meet them mm-hmm. to be like right like are we serious about doing this um, so then I put the invitation in and then boom we came back and then I think all the training the lead up to that I was like yeah, this I've got, the dip. I've got yeah. the dip between my teeth again, yeah. um, particularly when you're when you're kicking around with like Ali and Sai, who have been to regionals a couple of times, and Ali, and Ali Crawford mm-hmm. as well. Like, you're, you're you're in such good company. I, th- I think it's always just a reassuring thing. You're like, yeah, okay, like I've still like I've still got it. Mm-hmm. I've still got it, and like I've not trained like I've not trained as well as I would have wanted in the lead up to this. Yeah, but like yeah, like I've still like I've still got it. If I, I've still got it if I if I want it. Yeah. Um, so then that that gave me like a like a, a push again, and then um, off the back of that, I've done a lot of training with Hugh at Strength Lab. Right. Okay. And he's very much like still wants to do it. Like as it, a master, yeah. he loves it. Yeah. So then, um, and then also like keeping in touch with all of these guys. Like since then, it's just kind of kept me going. So that so yeah, I would say it did dip, but um, yeah, just hungrier for and, and I think still still seeing the results. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I've now got two young guys that train with me. Um, Keep you on your toes. Yeah, and also, and also, I just like working them into shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, young, young Archie, young Archie needs it. Um, him and I have a couple of ding dongs back and forward in training. It's just, uh, it's good for him. It's good for me. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of different avenues I want to touch on on here. Um, I'll come back to you. I'll come to your last point first. So. I always remember uh, something Sir Alex Ferguson said where he said you need a combination of the older generation that's got more experience, they know how to train, um, you know, 
but they probably don't have that same kind of like maybe passion and motivation that they used to but that's where that younger generation co that comes in helps they bring that a little bit more they keep their older guys on their toes and it's the blend of the two that marry up really really well which sounds like very similar to the the situation that that you're in at your gym at the moment which is is pretty cool obviously with the bit of motivation come back from realizing you know that you still want to want to do that but that's always stuck in in my mind yeah that and that absolutely rings true yeah um second thing i wanted to touch on so obviously took a bit of courage to in, initiate that setting up of the the scottish kind of sid team and things seem to have snowballed in scotland quite a lot since then um in the sense that uh, there's a lot of good athletes that are up and coming um if you look at the regional events like part the participation for probably top of the league baby yeah. top of the league has <laughs> <laughs> been the highest I think every event this season as well um, what what's going on <laughs> what do you think what do you think is going on Jen I'm going to let you go first on this one yeah I think like we're all just like like it's really good for everyone just to get to see one another like because we don't have many comps in Scotland mm -hmm. so like if you want to compete you kind of have to go England or like anywhere else there's not really many in Scotland so it's like good for everyone just to get together like once a month see one another and like although it's not a competition like everybody is there to do as best as they can yeah. so yeah I think they're just really good events for us yeah Liam Liam and Liam and Liam <laughs> and, and Liam Liam. <laughs> um, Liam has absolutely thrived in that regional <laughs> manager role yeah. like like he's a, he is a, he's a credit to that role and um, he loves it like he drives it and drives it so well um like he is a, like he is on your case so like, do you know what, us there do you know what's funny so when i approached each regional manager after the conversation i was like gauging did they seem keen? Did they not seem keen? Mm -hmm. And after the conversation with Liam and how, like, he was speaking to me, I was thinking, I don't think he's on board with this. <laughs> and I was literally like, because it was, the, I think the, probably one of the last times I've probably spoken to him was probably a good few years ago when he was still, like, quite hot-headed. Hot yeah. Do you know what I mean? And just, like, changed a lot and was talking to me very, like, calm, very, like, mellow. I was like, oh... Like it just doesn't sound like he's getting excited about this and then look at this past year it's been like oh shit like he, like you said he's thrived in that role and yeah. when we were at Arnold Fitness Games like he was like oh that's uh, that's Conor McGregor's mate <laughs> and I was like what it's like yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that guy trains with Conor McGregor sometimes just like some random guy is probably you know in the background of one of Conor McGregor's pictures on, uh, one time it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went over, it's like chatting to him. He gets like, all these free drinks. You're like, right, I can kind of see where, <laughs> how good Liam is and just starts talking to, to people and yeah. he straight yeah. away can find a bit of connection yeah, there. He, and he's like, he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant for those events. Um, I think also like seeing Scottish athletes do well has helped. Like seeing how well Jen's done. Ali obviously doing so well at the games. Of course. Like having a bit of success in the Scottish CrossFit space has, has helped drive that on, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, also like you know I'm saying, no real comp, so like it's just a good opportunity for a lot of what like of actual friends to get like to get to together. Get together. Um, like the regional events have created a platform to do that. for that, and and amongst like busy busy lives and busy schedules mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, it's just worked. It's just worked really well. It's funny how the just by being a little bit more organised and just setting a few dates that people are actually like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do go. that. It just needs someone to actually initiate it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, I, I think the first time I seen all you guys after Sud was like the regional event. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, would, it would have been. Yeah. 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 Um, I also think the 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 gym the gyms that we've been to as well have also been like super like super welcoming. Yeah. To us as well, I think. Like, 
I think had you had had not quite as good an experience in any of those given gyms, mm. like it, it may have been a little bit different, where like you felt you were on edge because there was something else going on because the gym were like. But it's very much like yeah. a, they're pretty open to having us. I feel like. I feel like for most of the gyms, especially in the UK, it, it's been all the gyms have been pretty welcoming, which mm-hmm. has been has been really good. Um, and it's funny, Denmark's a little bit different. So we obviously had regional events in Denmark for the first season, um, and for the sec- second season we haven't. And I think gyms over there expect that you want something out of them or. Um, I think they, char- they charged at one of the re- Danish regional events in the last season as well. Oh. Um, it, w- it wasn't like it was like a nominal fee, but I don't feel like they have the same kind of welcoming mm-hmm. as what we do in the UK. Which is it's funny because we pretty much put them on just for people to get together like you guys, and like the momentum it's ended up building is is quality. Um, and I think that's where I get a bit of a kick out of it was is because I remember the times when I performed at the best or I felt like I was it was when I was in a team either like going to the games or regionals or, or whatever and same when I was sailing it was when I was around other like-minded people who wanted to push to see how good they could become like it, it creates a bit of magic and something special and especially if everyone's like friendly about it and supportive of, of each other as well it, it actually creates such a good environment um, I think it says how, like on the on the left and better region I was like how many P, how many PBs do you <laughs> like do you see pretty much like yeah. the major the majority of people that are there on the day yeah. probably put their hands up and say PB yeah. PB my left you win last and I still can't win, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> You're winning now. Well, <laughs> well, the team is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're doing a SID team as well this year that you two guys are on, a GSD Compete SID team, which is, I'm really excited about. Um, Me too. Same. Because I look at that team and I think, whoa, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty deep. Um, but like I put in the group yesterday as well I think obviously part of it is your ability as an athlete but also we said a little bit deeper than that it was because you guys you know you're you're great people to be around you're nice and humble Uh, you'll talk to anyone which is always really nice Um, you always take personal responsibility for like your performance trying to get the most out of each other and you can see when you come down like you respect the gym like you put everything away after you if someone you know needs a bit of space after a workout like you know you, you give it to them um, and I think that was another big thing for, for me and Dan when we were putting that team together as well um, I've probably only become more aware of of like that side of things and actual values and why that's kind of important to us but like for you for example Fraser in your gym is that something you're kind of aware of as well um, do you know what I mean with regards to values and like the community that you that you bring together and the yeah. culture yeah absolutely so it's, it's interesting and ver- at various stages like we'll have had people who have walked into our gym, um, usually male, um, with like a huge ego yeah. that doesn't really fit yeah. in that like in our sort of space, and it's either a month down the line they're probably not a member, or they'll very much have changed to fit the community. They'll realise yeah, that yeah. actually being like being like that, like as inappropriate like mm-hmm. in that space. So they'll they'll change mm-hmm. like to fit the community like and generally generally that's always a front mm-hmm. so they'll just like lose the front they'll start to be a little bit more genuine and then they'll they'll fit in yeah uh, so yeah like absolutely um yeah like we definitely do see that yeah well what about you jen how how has it been 
Or is there anything you feel like you notice when you come down to, I don't know, Wigan in particular or the regional events that kind of sticks out in your mind as like, yeah, like there's always a little bit of that there or and I always notice that that kind of helps push me forward or, yeah. Yeah, just how like supportive everyone is of mm -hmm. each other. Like, like we're lucky with that back home in our gym. Um, like you were saying, like people very quickly either fit or they leave. So it, like you can have that good community because yeah. you know if there's anyone that didn't have that, like they wouldn't be in mm -hmm. the community. They would just leave. Um, so yeah, like everywhere I've been, like CrossFit gym, you find that like everybody's really supportive, yeah. um, welcoming. And like, I, like no matter what your goal is, like you might not be trying to make semis or whatever it is, but everybody's there just to do better for them. Yes. So like yeah. whatever label that is, like you're all you're all on the same page. You're all just trying to get better. Yeah. It's, and I think uh, that's why, you know, we all do this is to get a little bit better every day. Um, but I think what makes it, again, more more worthwhile and more like powerful for me and gets me a bit more excited is being able to do it with a group of people that also want to do that as well um, which is uh, for me that sport's always been a, been a big thing in my life being in a team and around the group of people has always been when I perform best and it's always been fun as well and I think the combination of those three things, it's kind of like, it just merges together and special things always seem to to happen off the back of that, which, like I said before, I feel like it's happening in Scotland, which is, is really awesome to see, so, yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'm on Scots. <laughs> <laughs> is there not a, a Scottish phrase, like, I don't know? <laughs> that you'd say to each other whenever you see each other. And they're like, come on, Jimmy. How are you the new Jimmy? I, I have no idea. There probably is, yeah, so we just can't think but, of it. Yeah, I just don't know about right now. What was it you were trying to teach me the other day? Which, um, oh. Wished. Uh, our team uh, name for about so, Yeah, sorry. Event. Our team name for Winter Soldiers is Hudger Wished. That was it. What does that mean? It's like, be quiet. And say it again. Hudger Wished. <laughs> Completely different language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, cheers, guys. It was good. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jack. I really hope you enjoyed today's podcast with Fraser and Jen. They're two great people, and I'm very much looking forward to spending some more time with them this week when we have our SID training camp, like I said before. Pat in the pipeline for 2023. You can expect us to be dropping some fresh new t-shirt designs so you can look forward to that and also we're looking to be doing more training camps during 2023 as well from my perspective and my point of view the program that we deliver is is unrivaled the you know the content and the detail in there is is the best out there that i'm aware of um there are many ways you can tailor that to yourself but the natural next step I feel like for, for us is to be getting in front of people and actually being able to you know adjust people's technique uh, point them in the right direction a little bit more with what they're actually doing in the gym with regards to movement so training camps is going to be a big one for this next year uh, expect training camps in the UK and abroad. So that's what you can expect coming in 2023. We'll be dropping more details when we have them. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next episode of the podcast very soon.